Welcome, sweet friends, to the channel Frugal Money Saver. My name is Emmy, and my husband is Paul. We are so happy you are here with us today. Today, we are going to step back in time just a little bit, and we're going to bring to light some of the forgotten ways of yesteryear that people use to save money. And we hope it is encouraging, especially as we are going through our no spend, low spend January. And let us know in the comments below how you're doing. We are doing super well. We are being super creative in the kitchen, making up all kinds of fun food. And we're gonna show you one today. We're just concentrating on just getting back to the basics. And I hope these tips will encourage you to do exactly that. Now, the first thing we wanna talk about is something I'm not even sure I talked about on this channel ever, but it's something that I use. So I'm kind of like at a loss why I never mentioned it, but it's an apron. Think back. I cannot remember my mom or my grandmother ever being without an apron on. Why? because it preserved their clothes. It kept their clothes clean. It kept their clothes neat. When it was time for dinner, mom didn't come to the table with splatters of pasta sauce all over her. She took the apron off, hung it up, and came to the table ready to enjoy a delicious meal she had prepared. The same with my grandmother. My grandmother wore an apron from the time she got up in the morning, except for meal times, until she went to bed at night. They used them because they were practical. It's like a uniform of the home almost. And I have to say, when I put my aprons on, I know it's time to get to work. And I'm going to show you some of my favorite aprons in just a minute that I own. I prefer vintage aprons because that's who I am. I'm stuck in a different era, but any apron will do. They're practical. They save you money. They keep your clothes clean and neat. At the end of the day, you're not tossing in a ton of garments because they got stained or ruined while you were cooking. Instead, you take your apron and put that in the laundry basket and pull a fresh one the next day. Let me just show you my favorites. Let's turn the camera around and step back in time just a little bit. These are three of my absolute favorite vintage aprons. The first one is in a black floral print. I love it. It's almost to the ground. It's really long, but it's perfect. Look at the pockets. They're functional. I can keep whatever I need in them as I go room to room, cleaning up. I love the way the back buttons. This is a real old fashioned style. I found it at a flea market, I believe, or a thrift store for a few dollars. This little beauty is another one of my favorites. Of course, it's in pink and you all know I love that. Another functional pocket on the front, which I love that these aprons have that. Just a lovely old fashioned floral design. How precious is this one? Again, another half apron. Look at the pattern on this one. They just make me happy. You put them on and you're happy. Front pocket has this beautiful coffee pot design on it. And again, it just ties around the waist. So these are just three of my absolute favorite vintage aprons. So those are just three of my favorites. I pick them up at thrift stores, tag sales, again, no more than a couple of dollars ever, ever do I pay. But they're such a practical item. It is just something that our grandparents and our parents used that somehow along the line, a lot of people stopped using them. But I'm encouraging you because I bet every single person who is watching this video has an apron somewhere in their home. I know you do, come on, admit it. 
pull it out, start wearing it, keep your clothes neat, keep your clothes clean. It's less washing, it's less wear and tear. So that's our first tip. The second thing we wanna talk about is using up what we have as far as food. And you know this channel is all about zero food waste. One of the biggest things that people did with leftover fruits or fruits that were just not the sweetest or the best was turn them into marmalade and preserves. And I am going to show you an orange marmalade recipe now that supersedes anything you can buy in the store. It's using up what I have and I'm putting it in a jar that I already own. So making your own preserves is another great way, save some money and get back to the forgotten ways. Now I'm gonna turn the camera around. I'm gonna show you with three ingredients and one of them's water, a pectin free refrigerator orange marmalade. This is not shelf stable. You must keep it refrigerated. Let's turn around this camera and get into our kitchen. One of the best old fashioned tips that I love is making our own marmalades and jellies without pectin. They're so easy and it's a great way to use up leftover fruit or fruit that's seen a little bit better days. These were oranges we bought. They weren't amazing, but we've been eating them. But now at this point, we need to use them up and I'm gonna make some easy orange marmalade. First thing we're doing is we're cutting the ends off of some oranges that we scrubbed really well because we're gonna be using the skins in this recipe. Paul is just slicing them into thin slices. All five oranges have been cut beautifully. Now I just went through and some of them that have a lot of white pith like these, what I will do with them is use them in my vinegar cleaner because you don't wanna waste anything. What we wanna do now is we wanna kind of pulverize these oranges. So I'm gonna use my Nutribullet for that. You can use a food processor, you can use a blender, whatever works. Make sure you use seedless oranges doing this or remove all the seeds. Right now, ShopRite has an eight pound bag of oranges for $4.99. This is just five oranges here and you're gonna see how much we're gonna make. Now we don't wanna liquefy this, but we do wanna like get it pretty pulverized. This is exactly how we want it. You see that? Just a two second blend and this is what it came out like. So I'm gonna do the rest of these and transfer them to a pot for the stove. This is what we're starting with. Wait till you see how easy this is. I think I showed this recipe like two years ago and it's just one of our absolute favorites. Now to the oranges, two cups of sugar. And I know you're thinking that is a tremendous amount and please by all means cut it down. But you need to remember there's orange peels in this. So they can be a tad bit bitter. I'm using two cups and we've done this before and it's worked really well. So this is a great way to just take some simple ingredients and make a gourmet item. To this, we're also going to add a half a cup of water and two tablespoons. And that's for five oranges. I will link the recipe down below, the original recipe, but as you'll see, I tweaked it for more oranges and I adjusted the sugar. Now what we're going to do is bring it to a boil and we're going to simmer it for about 20 minutes. Now, while this is cooking for the 20 minutes, you have to keep stirring it and checking on it. You can see how much this thickened. We are at our 20 minute mark. So I'm gonna turn this off. You can just see that. But I'm gonna make sure this is completely done. I'm gonna show you the jelly test and I've shown this before. I have a small dinner plate here that I stuck in the freezer for about 10 minutes. So it's ice cold. 
Then I'm going to take a spoon of this preserves. There is no water coming down. Do you see that? It just stuck to the plate. That means it is done. Look at this beautiful, beautiful orange marmalade we created out of five oranges, sugar, and water. Now we're just going to let it cool before we put it in our jar. So we are reusing what looks like pickle jar, I'm thinking, but it has been thoroughly washed, cleaned, dried. Another wonderful gadget for the kitchen is your wide mouth funnel. I can't tell you how many times I use this. This yeah. has cooled and you can just see how thick this has become. Oh my goodness, it's so beautiful. Look at the brightness of the color. Look at how much it made. And remember, this is not shelf stable. It must be kept in the refrigerator. Look at this beautiful orange marmalade. Yay! We had the orange marmalade for breakfast this morning. It was so delicious. You saw how much five oranges made. Now is the time of year oranges are on sale everywhere. So keep an eye out because I don't know if you've seen how much jellies, jams, and marmalades cost in the store. You can make them substantially cheaper at home and so much more delicious. I will link the original recipe down below and you're going to modify it for how many oranges you have. The original recipe I think calls for one orange but I had five and I wanted a bigger batch, so I modified it, you do the same. Also with the sugar, you're going to do it according to taste. Some of the pith is still in the marmalade and you've got those rinds. So you may need to adjust the sugar to your taste, but again, what an old fashioned, wonderful way to save yourself some money and make some homemade goodness. Along the lines, of reusing and repurposing and making do with what we have. We want to share with you a couple of things that we keep and we reuse in a different way. But we have to be careful that some of those things that we are keeping do not become useless to us. What do I mean? When you are saving something and you have an abundance of it, and you are not using it, and it is just taking up space, at this point becoming clutter. So we have to be really careful of that. There's such a fine line of wanting to repurpose things and wanting to reuse things, but then also the point of, I have too much of this and I will never use it, so what do I do? So we're gonna turn the camera around, we're going to show you three things that we keep and reuse but one of them got away from us and we needed to scale down. Let's turn this camera around and get back into the kitchen. Along the lines of reusing, repurposing, does anyone know what this is? If you guess bacon grease, you are absolutely right. We keep our bacon grease in the refrigerator. It is amazing for flavoring. We use it in soups. We use it when we cook any kind of greens. If we make collards, if we make escadol and beans, anything like that, you put a teaspoon of that in. Oh my goodness. They call it liquid gold and they are right. And today with the price of fat and butters being what they are, we really need to rethink and reuse everything we possibly can. And yes, we keep it in my Pocahontas mug. Before I pour it into this cup, I do let the grease cool. And then once it's cool, because this cup is ice cold, I don't want to add hot bacon grease to it. I let the bacon grease cool. I add it. And then I just take a plastic sandwich bag and I cover it and right back into the refrigerator it goes. In my butter compartment on my refrigerator door, I keep butter wrappers. Here they are. When we are finished with a stick of butter, I just take the wrapper, put it right up here, and close the lid. I use these to grease pans constantly. 
Don't throw your butter wrappers away. You can use them to grease your pans anytime. And it's so much better using this than those chemical sprays, you know, like Pam and those kind of things. This is just a little bit more natural. They're going to get thrown in the garbage anyway. So keep those butter wrappers to grease those pans. And this is indeed what I am talking about. What happens is we want to be good stewards and reuse what we have and repurpose what we have, but we can't let it get out of control either. We keep every container that like comes into this house if we can reuse uh, it. Yeah, we need to go through this now because it's wonderful to save and reuse and repurpose, but then sometimes we may have to recycle as well. And that is what we're gonna go through now and see what we have here and what we can keep that will be useful and what needs to be recycled. We paired everything up. And of course we have a bunch of rogue lids. Ask me where the bottoms are. And we have these old chili takeout containers. So now you may say, well, those are great, but listen, we just have too much. This is what we're keeping because I use these in the freezer and all this has to go into our recycling bin. So as far as butter wrappers, as far as bacon grease, we're good. As far as those plastic reusable containers, we had to get rid of some. It was just so much. And you can still see we have a lot and hopefully we can keep paring down, but we use them. We freeze things in them. They are valuable to us. But I needed to look and see I had how many lids with no bottoms. Where are those bottoms? That's, that's the question. And also those takeout containers. Yeah, they're great, but you know what? They're not practical and we're not using them. They need to be recycled. And now the last one we want to talk about is entertainment. I want you to close your eyes for a minute, come on. And I want you to think about a time before you had a cell phone, or before you had the internet, or before you had your tablet. And I want you to think about what you did before those items were in your home for entertainment. Well, I can tell you, I crocheted, I cross-stitched, I read all the time, the list goes on. How much of that am I doing recently? Honestly, not much. Why? Because what has happened is between the computer, between my phone, between the television, I have entertainment all the time. But if we stop for a minute and actually plan some unplugging time, it will allow us to return to the things we loved doing. Now, I know so many of you on here have told me you don't even have a television set, and I think that's amazing. Honestly, I don't think I could do that, but I do think that Paul and I are going to start scheduling our screen time. Why do we want to schedule screen time instead of just going the rate we're going? Number one, to be present with each other and other people a lot more. It also reduces stress. It reduces envy. Social media, talk about envy. People look on Instagram, people look on Facebook, and you compare and you contrast. Who needs that? We're happy. We've got enough stuff. When we think back to not that long ago, when these items were not a part of our homes on a regular basis, we had a lot more free time, didn't we? And it's amazing now how we have just replaced all the hobbies and things we've loved with electronics, with screens. And I want to encourage you through the month of January, when we are indoors more, and it is so tempting to binge watch TV from four in the afternoon till night at night, turn the TV off for a couple of hours and revisit something that you love doing. Now you may say to me, Em, I do that all the time. I never watch TV or I'm never on the computer or my phone. And I say kudos to you because it is something that Paul and I struggle with. We enjoy sitting at night and watching TV. 
that is fine. But we also have to limit the amount of time we are on it so that we can enjoy and pursue other things. Like I always said to you, at the end of your journey, I don't think anyone will ever turn back and say, boy, I wish I watched more TV, or boy, I wish I had spent more time on the computer. So just remember that, be present, revisit those activities you love doing in this month of January when things are slower, the holidays are over, we can relax and enjoy the time inside before gardening starts. We just want to encourage you with that as well. So we hope this video was super helpful. Our question of today is, before the internet and before cell phones and before laptops came into your life, what did you really enjoy doing? And do you still do it as much? I think if we each encourage each other with great ideas on what we can be doing in our downtime, what we can be doing to entertain ourselves other than looking at screens, I think we'll just be so much better off. We thank you for spending this time with us. We ask that you please give this video a big thumbs up. It does help us so much. Remember, subscribe if you haven't best, best group of viewers on YouTube, hands down. We are so blessed by each and every one of you, and we thank you for that. We ask you to be well. We ask you to stay safe, and above all, we wish you blessings. Until our next video, may God bless you.